Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor Mandeep Kaur from GNDU Amritsar. Today we are going to talk on the module Meaning and Types of Economic Systems from the paper Business Environment. Now after completing the module, you will be able to understand the concept of economic system, the characteristics of the different kinds of economic system and pros and cons of each economic system. Today, all the economies are facing with the some economic problem that is the scarce resources and endless human wants. Therefore, every society has to ensure the best use of the available limited resources. The decision is determined by answering three fundamental economic questions. That is, what to produce? how to produce and for whom to produce. What to produce deals with the allocation of resources to produce the varieties of goods and services which yield greatest satisfaction to the consumers. On the other hand, how to produce deals with utilizing the effective method of production and utilization of the various resources to produce the goods and resources. For whom to produce is another question, which deals with the equitable distribution of goods and services among all the members in the economy. Economic system. Economic system is an important aspect of economic environment. The country's economic environment totally depends upon the type of economic system being followed as it influences the every economic decision and policies related to the economy. An economic system is a system that governs the economic decisions related to utilization of resources for the production, distribution, consumption and exchange of goods and services in an economy. According to Logs, Economic system consists of those institutions which the given people or nation or group of nations has chosen or accepted as a means through which resources are utilized for the satisfaction of human wants. In the words of Grachi, economic system is an evolving pattern or complex of human relations which is concerned with the disposal of scarce resources for the purchase of satisfying various private and public needs for the goods and services. There are various types of economic system. Basically, three important types of economic systems are being practiced in the world. That is capitalism, socialism and mixed economy. These different economic systems are characterized by the following factors that is the role of the government, freedom of choice, ownership of resources, determination of price and who is gaining the profits earned. Even this diagram is showing the economic system that there are three types of economic systems. The first type of economic system that is capitalism. In the words of G. D. H. Cole, capitalism is a system of production for profit under which instruments and materials of production are privately owned and the work is done mainly by hired labor, the product belonging to the capitalist owner or owners. Now, the three basic questions relating to production what to produce it is determined by the preferences of the consumers in capitalism how to produce determined by the producers who are going to get the profits for whom to produce is determined by the purchasing power of the people that whosoever can buy the product will use the product on the basis of the definition of the capitalism, the various characteristics of the capitalism can be explained. 
द कैपिटलिस्ट इकोनॉमी इज ऑल्सो नोन एज फ्री एंटरप्राइज इकोनॉमी एंड इट इज द ओल्डेस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ इकोनॉमी विच इज सपोर्टेड बाय द पॉलिसी ऑफ लेजर्स फियर कैपिटलिस्ट इकोनॉमीज आर ऑल्सो नोन एज प्राइवेट एंटरप्राइज इकोनॉमी द वेरियस फीचर्स ऑफ द कैपिटलिज्म आर हेयर द इंडिविजुअल्स आर एम्पार्ड विद द फ्रीडम टू ऑन प्रॉपर्टी एंड एक्सरसाइज कंट्रोल ओवर द यूज ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी सो वट एवर दे विश टू यूज फॉर दैट प्रॉपर्टी दे कैन मोर ओवर बिजनेस फॉर्म्स आर फ्री फ्रॉम एनी काइंड ऑफ गवर्नमेंट रिस्ट्रिक्शन टू एक्वायर एंड यूज द रिसोर्सेज इन द प्रोडक्शन एंड सेल ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विसेज ऑफ देअर चॉइस नो गवर्नमेंट कंट्रोल नो गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेंशन विल बी देयर मोर ओवर all the economic decisions relating to the production and distribution are guided by the choices and preferences of the consumers whatever they wish to buy whatever they wish to use will be produced and distributed entrepreneurial activities are guided by the profit motive only entrepreneurs will earn the profit or loss after making payment to all the factors of production therefore they are always motivated to maximize the residual profit by minimizing the cost and maximizing the revenue this makes the capitalist economy an efficient and self regulated economy a prominent feature of the capitalist economy is the competition that ensures the optimal use of factors of production and safeguard against consumers exploitation there are no restrictions on the entry and exit of firms the large number of producers are available to supply a particular good or services which is in demand therefore no firm can earn more than normal profit free market mechanism is a system where the transactions are settled automatically by the market forces without any interference of the government or any third party and this is a mechanism which is followed in the capitalist economy firms which are able to adjust at a given price earn the normal profit and those who fail to do so often have to quit the industry a producer will produce those goods which give him more profit all the economic activities since they are guided by the market forces and government intervention is assumed to be nil for the purpose of smooth functioning of the economy so in the world if we see the pure capitalism is hardly seen anywhere the economies of usa uk france netherland etc are known as capitalist economies now after understanding uh, what the capitalism is and its feature now we shall discuss that what are the merits of this particular economic system due to presence of intense competition among the producers or the business enterprises consumers will be able to get variety of quality products at competitive prices the price which they wish to pay they can the capitalism encourages competition and innovation even among the producers that leads to improvement in the method of production that brings efficiency and more profits which are required for the further growth producers undertake the production of goods which appear to give maximum profits in anticipation of demand this leads to optimum utilization of resources since their objective is maximizing the profit so whatever the resources they are having they will try to optimally use them moreover capitalist economy is a highly adaptable because it adjusts itself according to the changing economic conditions the forces of demand and supply automatically regulate and adjust the situation of the shortages or the surpluses everybody enjoys economic freedom in capitalism so the producers have complete freedom to invest in any kind of business in any kind of trade in any kind of service and on the other hand the consumer can spend his income on the goods and services according to his desire 
large variety of goods and services are produced in the economy by the producers taking into consideration the taste preferences and liking of the consumer so the consumers are always on the better edge there is a very tough competition among the entrepreneurs they are always encouraged to produce the best quality of the products and that too at the competitive prices the technical development leads to increase in productivity as well as efficiency availability of the variety of goods and services according to the needs and wants of the consumer at the competitive prices give rise to the standard of living in this system of economic the workers are fairly rewarded as per their productivity because it will bring efficiency among the workers under the market economy as every worker is rewarded according to his ability according to his skill thus the workers try to work more and more leading to increase in the total output and efficiency moreover in this kind of economy there is ample scope of new inventions new innovations every producer takes an initiative to develop the new techniques in production with the objective to earn more profit and more market share the merits of capitalism according to karl marx capitalism contains the seeds of its own destruction the arguments given against the capitalism are that the producers attempt to produce luxurious items which are in demand by the rich section of the society and they remain less focused on the production of essential commodities which are in demand by the weaker or poor sections of the society as a result of this gap between have and have nots widen further due to absence of government intervention producers are in a position to exploit resources as well as the customers for their own benefit by creating artificial shortage of goods presenting misleading advertisements about the usefulness of the product etc thus there is no consumer sovereignty in the seller's market in the capitalist economy resources are being wasted on the production of luxurious goods to satisfy the demand of those few rich who can afford to buy those products ignoring the lead needs of the lower section of society which leads to misallocation or wastefulness of the resources the institution of private property creates inequalities of income and wealth under capitalism the price mechanism through which competition brings huge profits to the big producers the landlords the entrepreneurs and the traders who accumulate vast amount of wealth while the rich roll in wealth and luxury the poor live in poverty if free market mechanism fails to bring stability in the economy then the nation may fall into deep economic crisis or may the whole economic system will collapse rich segment of the society can exploit the poor section as they want due to lack of the government intervention may lead to class conflict which can adversely affect law and order situation within the country so the conflicts can go on increase huge financial resources spent by the firms on the advertisement and other sales promotion techniques in order to lure the customers for buying the products the cost of such expenses borne by the customers in the form of increased prices central planning authority has no role to ensure balanced economic development in the country the priority sector areas where the potential profitability is very low is neglected by the private entrepreneurs which remain underdeveloped in the future also economic decisions of the entities are governed by their self interest which is the profit motive and not the social welfare the second type of economic system is known as socialism 
Simulson defines socialism as the important essentials of the socialism are that all the great industries and the land should be publicly or collectively owned and that they should be conducted for the common good instead of private profit. So here he is talking about welfare. Now three decisions, what to produce, that is determined by the preferences of the government. How to produce, that is also determined by the government as well as the employees. For whom to produce, again determined by the preferences of the government, of course taking into consideration the needs of the public. The second type of economic system, socialism, there are various features of the socialism. Central meaning of socialism is common ownership. Socialism is also known as planned economy in certain countries, command economic system in other countries because it supports a philosophy of equity by equal distribution of income. The main features of socialistic economy are the ownership of resources of production, distribution and exchange lies with the government only. No individual is allowed to have any private property, accumulate any kind of wealth and run any kind of business. The government has control over all the means of production and to utilize the earned profit for the benefit of society at large. The whole profit is distributed there only. Socialism is characterized by the central planning. Unlike capitalism, planning takes place here. Central planning authority in the light of the available resources and the national priorities of the planned growth allocates the various resources. Moreover, equal distribution of income is ensured in socialism. As equal chances are given to all, whether they go in any occupation, whether they go for education, irrespective of any religion, caste, creed, etc. Under socialism, only the government is authorized for determining the prices of goods and services. Unlike the capitalism, where the market forces uh, help to determine the prices, here, administered prices are taken into consideration by the government and administered prices benefit to poor section of society because the subsidized prices are charged from them. In today's world, certain countries are following socialism like People's Republic of China, Communist Party of Vietnam and Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka etc. When we talk about merits of socialism, the very important from them is that planning authorities, the central planning authority of the government, it operates for achieving socio-economic objectives like poverty elevation, full employment, increase in national as well as per capita income, etc. Central planning authority exploits the resources in the best possible manner after assessing the basic needs of the people, essential commodities. During depression, no investment comes from private sector, but socialism ensures that there is effective control over cyclical fluctuations as the government pumps up investment in an economy that generates more employment and income, which further creates demand for goods and services. This kind of economic system has a prime feature of social justice since all the wealth and resources are owned by the government. Moreover, all the economic activities are guided by a central plan that channelizes the effect of every individual or enterprise towards the achievement of national objectives that put the country on the path of progress and prosperity. Socialism type of economic system too has various demerits. The consumers have to consume those goods which are produced and available as per the central plan of the government. 
So there is loss of consumer sovereignty under socialism. Moreover, there is state monopoly in socialism since all the resources are managed by the government. Thus, there is no provision for accumulating wealth and personal profits. Lack of automatic functioning under socialism because the central planning authority governs the economic activities according to its own interest. Socialism encourages evils of bureaucracy, red tapism, corruption, since the power for making decisions rests with the government officials only. Personal interests of the corrupt government officials are served at the cost of the nation. Socialist economy is very rigid in nature because it does not make changes in their policies according to the changes in the external environment. Central authority is overburdened with the routine matters and has very less time to think and plan for the economic development and prosperity of the country. There is complete absence of freedom and individualism under socialist type of economic system, which is ethically wrong. And these factors can create anti-state agitation that can cause political instability in the country. Fear competition brings economic prosperity to the nation. But in the system of socialism, absence of competition among the producers leads to inefficiencies and decreased productivity, thus no development of the nation. Third type of economic system is mixed economy. J.W. Grove defines it. One of the presuppositions of the mixed economy is that private firms are less free to control major decisions about the production and consumption than they would be under capitalist free enterprise. And that public industry is free from government restraints that it would be under centrally directed socialist enterprise. Thus, as the definition is suggesting, there is a coexistence of private and public system. Now the, again the three types of decisions. What to produce? It is determined partly by the consumer preferences and partly by the government. How to produce? It is determined partly by the producers who are seeking profits and partly by the government owners. For whom to produce is again determined partly by the purchasing power of the people and partly by the government preferences. Mixed economy, a third type of economic system. It is a perfect blend of two extremely opposite economic systems that is capitalism and socialism. Here the public and private sector participate jointly for the development of the country. As we have seen in the previous uh, slides that totally socialism and totally capitalism are not possible. So that is why mixed economy is a better type of economic system. The resources of the countries are owned and used by both the government and private industrialists. Public and private sector are expected to work on cooperative basis but in certain fields of production both operate in competitive spirit because it is also in the interest of the society. Centralized planning authority laid down various targets and objectives in the plan for the growth of the economy. And the government frames various policies from time to time, like in India, monetary policy, fiscal policy, industrial policy, etc., in order to achieve the targets within the specified time period. Mixed economy is governed by dual price mechanism. The forces of demand and supply determine the prices of certain goods and services which are being produced by the private sector. But in most of the cases of the public sector, pricing of the goods and services are declared by the government, especially in case of essential commodities, government fixes the administered prices. Mixed economy ensures the individual freedom regarding production, 
distribution and exchange of goods and services. Individuals can own their own property because it is allowed and can have any occupation under the selective and effective government intervention. So here the rigidness of government is not there. Social welfare and profit motive go side by side since both public and private sector earn profit under the mixed economy. Taxes are also levied both in case of public sector and private sector but only to the profit earning enterprises. So in case of private sector whatever the profit they are earning they will have to pay the taxes. The reason being government wishes to prevent the concentration of economic power and resources in the hands of big corporate houses. Like India, India is the biggest example of mixed economy. There are certain other developing countries who follow this kind of system. Merits of mixed economy. Due to the presence of competition between public and private sector, presence of individual freedom and dual price mechanism, efficient utilization of resources take place. Mixed economy ensures maintenance of general balance between public and private sector. Public sector remain focused on availability of basic infrastructure facilities and direct the private investment as per targets laid down in the central plan. Mixed economy further permits adequate freedom to different economic units. For example, consumers here are free to use their incomes in the manner they wish to. All the individuals are free to choose their own occupations and the government strives to create favorable conditions for the growth of chosen occupations. The mixed economic pattern accelerates economic development as the government seeks the cooperation of the private sector which possesses adequate resources, expertise and experience. Like other economic systems, mixed economies again not free from demerits. The private sector is taxed heavily and various restrictions are imposed upon it by the government. Well, the public sector procures subsidized inputs. Such a discrimination develops a sense of non-cooperation between the private and public sector. Government monitors the profit level of the private enterprises. The fear of the government policy to nationalize the private enterprises is likely to prevail in the mixed economy. Due to government nationalization policy, there is less scope for the inflow of foreign investment, which is essential for the development of any country. There is always delay in making certain decisions, especially in case of public sector, which is a great hindrance in the path of smooth functioning of the economy. Political parties and self interested people take undue advantages from the public sector. Hence, it leads to emergence of several evils like black money, bribe, corruption, tax evasion and other illegal activities. Now, the three types of economic systems can be compared on the basis of certain characteristics in a summarized form. Role of the government if we take the characteristic role of the government, in case of socialist or planned economy, government decides all the economic activities. In case of capitalist economy, there is little or no role of the government, while in case of mixed economy, government creates laws and regulates the business activities. Now on the basis of the second characteristic, that is the freedom of choice. In the socialist or planned economy, there is no freedom of choice. While in case of capitalism, consumers and producers have full freedom of choice. Mixed economy, limited freedom of choice given 
the government controls as far as ownership of natural resources is concerned in planned economy the whole ownership is of the public or the state sector in case of capitalism it is by the private sector while in case of mixed economy it is both by the public and private sector price determination of any product or service in case of centrally planned economy government decides the prices in case of capitalism price mechanism is determined by the market forces that is demand and supply forces in case of mixed economy price mechanism system prevails but regulated by the government since there are administered prices of certain commodities certain essential commodities which sector answers the basic economic question that is what to produce how to produce for whom to produce in case of socialist economy state and the public sector decides in case of capitalist economy private sector decides while in case of mixed economy jointly the decision is taken by public and private sector now after discussing the three different kinds of economic system their pros and cons let's summarize what we have learned in this module every country follows different kind of economic system the economic system of the country may be capitalism which is characterized by the laissez faire policy that stresses upon the philosophy of profit maximization private ownership consumer sovereignty and limited role of the government on the other hand certain countries are following socialism or centrally planned economies which emphasizes the philosophy of equitable distribution of income social welfare full employment and administered prices the third type we have studied is mixed economy which is a combination of the two extremely different economic systems that ensures coexistence of public and private sector here flexibility is there centralized economic planning is there individual freedom is there social welfare as well as profit motive is there so every economic system has a positive as well as negative aspect practically the suitability of a particular economic system that a country follows depends upon the historical background of the people the extent of wealth or the natural resources the country is having and of course the will of the political parties etc thank you very much